I don't have any power. Really, we need real electricity. We need to be connected to the old grid there. All right, so to get the power onto my property, we have to come through my neighbor's property because that's the nearest power access point. So we've got 2,405 feet of conduit to buy. Got the neighbor down here doing his thing. He's not a fan of the camera, so we'll keep him off of there, but this is how we're gonna get through this little drainage ditch. The old Komatsu's down, otherwise I'd have been doing this myself. 
All right, so I kind of started in the middle of this project here, but I'm feeling pretty accomplished now. I feel like we're getting somewhere. So where this sweep is laying right here, so where we terminated this first run that we installed, there's going to be the second pull box of the project is going to be right here. And I just trenched from here all the way up to almost the road at my gate. There's going to be another pull box. So now I need to start working on getting the conduit assembled and thrown into the ditch because we got some weather moving in. And that's why I chose to do these low laying sections first because I don't know what the weather holds for us, but uh, these areas tend to hold some water. So. The rest of my focus today is going to be getting the conduit in the ditch and getting the ditch put back so that uh, we're weather ready. So I have this 100 foot section all glued together here and I got to go ahead and pull it underneath the fence over here and then we'll kind of build backwards off of it to our second pull up box and then I'm going to put some dirt on that because that's the low lying area is basically why I made this section up try to get it in place first and of course I got to get all the dirt out of the end of it that I shoved into it trying to squeeze the other pipes together got to make sure you keep the dirt out as best you can it would be great if I had some caps but uh, that'll really make pulling your string through quite a pain if you have a bunch of excess dirt in there here we go Maybe we could use that side boom I mentioned earlier. I almost put two more sticks on. I'm glad I didn't. 100, 100 foot's about all I want to pull. All right, she's in. Looking good. All right, I threw some dirt on the pipe to hold it down there in case we got a serious downpour and the pipe got flooded. Then I went ahead and threw some buried electrical tape about a foot above the pipe. And now we can finish our backfill in this section at least so that uh, if we get some bad weather, it's not gonna be a big mess down here. We got the rain. 
It rained most of yesterday afternoon. It's rained all night, and it's supposed to pretty much keep raining all day today. We got a little lull here, so I want to try to get this pipe bombed into this ditch and uh, throw a little bit of dirt on it so it doesn't float up out of there if we get some, some drowning rains. Thank heavens. I cannot overstate how much harder it is to do all this work when you've got 80 pounds of mud stuck to each boot. That was brutal, but I'm glad it's done. We're ready to cross the road up there. I gotta go get a load of 2 A so we can have something to backfill the road with whenever we're done. it's finally time that's the neighbor's driveway that's kind of the route that we're gonna be going here going up there and crossing but this is the road and this is what we need to cross next so we got to come through here on my driveway I really hated to tear this up so I tried to back drag some of the millings off keep a wind row of clean material but the rock underneath here is feet thick I mean there's I think there's around three feet of rock in here, so it could be a problem as we're trying to trench it. We might have an issue with the ditch collapsing on us, so that's going to be interesting. See how that holds together, and then, of course, we have the actual road, which is uh, a little nerve-wracking. We've got to have the township come out. So once we get the road cut, I have to obviously put the conduit in, and then we have to backfill it with uh, 2A material that I went and got there in the dump truck. But of course they don't trust you, so they gotta send somebody out and watch you backfill so you don't put anything in the road that they don't want, I guess. It's not exactly like it's a high quality road, but whatever. Anyway, trencher's ready to go. Let's keep on keeping on. Was kind of a bear. I've got issues with all these rocks falling into the ditch, which is what I was afraid of. So trying to figure out how to clean this out of there is going to be fun. But I got to clean some of those up. Luckily, that's just kind of in the apron of my driveway. Now that we're getting into the road, I don't think I'm going to have any more problems like that.
Well, that went pretty well. Not much road base here. Pretty amazing the road holds up as well as it does. Cleaning up the ditch over here and getting these rocks out of it proved to be more than a little difficult. So I threw a road plate in here because I knew it was going to be a while before I could get the conduit in the ditch because I really can't just start the conduit in the middle. I kind of need to start it from the starting point or termination point. Um, so anyway, finally got the ditch all cleaned out. Let's go start assembling everything here.
All right, well, with that accomplished, the actual road crossing is done. And it looks like a bomb went off up here, but we can start cleaning all this up now. I worked really hard on this driveway and it was really just bothering me the whole time to be doing this to it, but I know I'll have it looking good again eventually here. But time to just scrape all that in down there and maybe try to pack it in and put some millings on it, I don't know. Well, I can't show you much on this property. We are up here at the end of the run, finally. This is through the neighbor's place. And up to the pole, finally. We've got power lines. This has been a major project. I, uh, I knew that it was gonna be a lot of work, but this actually turned out to be a lot more of a project than I ever anticipated especially coming through the neighbor's place here. I think we have like seven or eight different lines we had to cross and go under and over. Water and communications and boiler lines and all kind of stuff. So very glad to finally be at the end of the line here. Man, that thing's noisy. We got our second to last ditch just trenched in though. This right here where I stopped this ditch is gonna be where our transformer pad goes. The last thing I have to do is from the transformer pad over to the meter socket on the building there. So I guess we better get started on that. All right, well, the old golf cart has been putting in some serious overtime here because I found out that she's pretty good at hauling pipe around. Once we got so far down into that bundle, it got pretty loose and hard to kind of carry around on the forks. Uh, so I kind of left it up there where we're going through the neighbor's place because it's a lot of slow going up through there around all his hotline crossings and everything. I think the golf cart's really found its calling here. But let's lay some pipe. And I decided against using the actual trencher to do that because while it would work good through the dirt area here, and I probably should have went ahead and did that part, uh, going through the rock with that trencher is an absolute nightmare. When I did that up by the road crossing, all that rock caves off and falls down in that little narrow ditch, and you can't get down in there to retrieve the rock, and you can't set your pipe on that rock because there's a good chance that you'll damage the conduit. So. Uh, the poor Komatsu here would have been my weapon of choice for this job, but unfortunately, as you can see, she doesn't have a track on her. That happened a while back, and I, uh, I'm still on the fence about what I'm going to do with this machine. It needs a lot of love, but uh, eventually it's going to get patched up at least enough to where it can be sold as an operational unit. But anyways, I needed something to get this job done. And we also needed a hoe ram to hammer out some rock across the road going through the neighbor's area. So I picked up this Cat 305. Uh, it's just a rental. I didn't buy it. This should get the job done quite nicely. 
These are very nice, fast, tight machines. This one has less than a thousand hours on it, so it's basically like new. And uh, yeah, let's fire this thing up, start digging.
Alrighty, that little 305 is a digger. I like that thing. We're going to ask the rental company what they would have to have for that machine. Uh, I'm betting it's going to be out of my price range, but you know, we can ask. So I trenched this one in here. I decided not to trench this run over to the building, like I said, because of the rocks. Uh, trying to save as much of my stone as I can. Um, aside from hitting some tree roots here, it was pretty, pretty smooth sailing. I intersected these ditches. I, I could have just came to this one and stopped, um, but I actually dug past it a little bit because the spec for the transformer pad says that the primary, which is going to be that pink pipe, has to be on the left of the transformer, and the low voltage secondary should be on the right side, uh, and the transformer would be facing us. So to get that to happen, I have to intersect, and I'm going to have to have that sweep come down here into this ditch and then this line coming from the building is going to go past it kind of underneath of it basically so so what we got to do I'm uh, I'm happy all we got to do is get a mattock clean out that ditch witch ditch and uh, get the dirt out of the hole and we'll be able to finish bombing in all of our pipe the first steps a doozy Ugh. all right so we have everything completely trenched, completely dug, and even have all the conduit completely laid in, except for this piece where I'm standing. So the end of this run right here is going to be the transformer. So this piece comes over here, under my feet, and all we have to do is make this last little stretch up into the meter socket here. So we got to go ahead and knock out the three inch ring on the meter socket, and we got to figure out our last little piece in here, we're gonna have to measure and get it laid in here proper. Ta da! Looks like four foot right on the money. kind of made up for it it's square enough looks about right Tight fit, but we managed. We are done. I don't want to see another piece of conduit again for a long time. This was a project. Alrighty then. We've got the conduit in from the meter socket all the way out there to where the transformer pad's going. And it continues on across the driveway, all the way out the driveway, across the road, to the neighbor's place, through the neighbor's place, up to the power pole behind the neighbor's place, some 2,500 feet away. This has been a heck of an undertaking. I really, uh, I kind of underestimated the challenges that we'd be up against with this guy. But I am so thankful to finally have that last little bit of conduit in there. Well... Before I can finish backfilling all this ditch, we need to finish putting in our ditch tape. And basically what that says is caution buried electric line below. And that means if you're digging in the area and you don't know that line's there, hopefully the idea is you'll hit that tape first, read the tape, and realize you're about to screw up. And uh, that'll stop you. A lot of times it doesn't work, but it's cheap insurance. So that's a long way to walk though. I think I've come up with a uh, way to cheat this.
this is what they call using your noodle. I still have to walk it back down through the ditch regardless. It's never going to lay perfectly in there. So at least this way, I can stretch it all out and I only have to walk up and back once. Sweet!
This project really took me by surprise. I very much underestimated how much work was going to be involved with just getting the conduit in the ground on this job. Uh, even my side down here, everything on this side of the road, as I said, was the easy section. It was all pretty flat and there was very little rock. Well, but there was no rock other than the, my driveway rock. Um, but it still kicked my butt as far as the cleanup because there's just no good way to put dirt back in a six inch wide trench unless you have a special made compaction wheel the dirt that came out of there now that it's all broken up and fluffed up just isn't going to go back in the ground uh, very nicely not to mention that pile of dirt doesn't like to scoot into a six inch wide hole the areas that i was able to clean up immediately before the dirt had a chance to really soak up the moisture uh, be it from the ground or from the sky those sections went back in the best this section right through this area specifically the area from where our transformer pad is going back across the driveway here to the last pull box that section went back together pretty darn well this was a very fine powder pretty sandy and it just pretty much fell right back into the hole now it is still a humped up area as is the entire ditch line i left that material humped up because it came out of there it pretty much has to go back in there you'll wind up with a very small bit of excess eventually but pretty much what needs to happen now is we need to have some rain we need to have some freeze thaws and in the springtime when i'm probably going to have to go through so like and i said that was just the entirety the of the ditch the, line my side of the road still kick my butt because it's just so tedious to go with the skid steer and put all this material back the way it was i used the grader there as you guys saw for the section where i could get the grader in there and do it and the grader worked pretty well for that but still uh, to really make it cleaned up fix my gutter on the side of my driveway and everything and not open up a bigger mess i kind of had to use the skid steer for 90 percent of it There's still a few spots I have opened up. There's a couple dirt piles I have down by my fuel shed there. And I'm kind of leaving those for right now because I want to rework that whole area. So there's no sense in hauling that dirt out of there and doing all kind of stuff just to have to redo it again here in the very near future. So as you guys see, I still have this area opened up here. This is going to be where our transformer pad goes. I have it open because I need to put some more dirt back in here. Some dirt still has to go back in here, but we are also going to continue on another ditch that way in the near future here. I have my well over there. I need to tie a water line in over there. And we're going to put in a second low voltage sweep heading over that direction for where my house is going to be going in the near future, hopefully. So with the well being just across the driveway here and no reason to dig a whole separate trench, while I had this trench open over to the meter socket, I went ahead and tossed in a one inch water line there so that I have water going to the building now eventually, um, should I ever need it. I mean, it's really not going into the building. It's really just gonna be for a uh, frost proof hydrant outside of the building. So I'll be able to pressure wash stuff over there, or fill up buckets or whatever. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is a very long run from the power. It's over 2,000 feet from the nearest power source, i.e. telephone pole, to where my transformer is going to go, where it'll switch that high voltage power to low voltage power for the building. I knew from the get-go this was not going to be a cheap undertaking. Um, I did not prepare for quite how expensive this is getting, though. I have over $12,000, I think it's 12200 exactly, invested in just conduit for this project. That's 3 inch Schedule 40, I used 2,500 feet of conduit for the primary feed and a couple sub feeds off of that, one for my building and a couple for the neighbor's building. $12,200 in conduit. That's not, That's not counting, counting diesel all of fuel my for time, all the machines ended we used. up being about two That's solid not weeks of rental work. costs for the trencher. That's not counting rental costs for the mini excavator and the hammer. There's going to be another pretty good chunk of change tied up in all of that stuff, I'm sure. That being said, this phase of the project was still by far the cheap phase. I finally got the power company to get back to me. I've been on them since January or February of 2023 to get out here and get me a solid number on this project. 
And finally, in August of 2023, I finally get a hard number from the department that deals with this stuff. Anybody, brace yourselves, take a guess now, down in the comments, tell me what you think they're gonna charge me. All they have to do is show up here, I have to have the pull rope in the conduit and everything ready to go. All they have to do is pull the wire in and set the transformer and connect the lines. How much do you think they're gonna charge me for that? You got your comments entered in? Brace yourselves. $52,000. $51,881 to be exact. Where they come up with this number, I have no idea, but I was pretty sticker shocked at that number. I looked up the wire cost because they're saying that I have to pay for all the wire. I was always under the impression that the power company was responsible for the first 300 feet onto your property, which I believe it says on their website. So I'm kind of contesting this because I looked up the wire and my wire cost, if I were to pay for the entire thing, which I don't think I should have to, I think I should pay for about 1,500 feet of it. But the two, but the cost for the entirety of it would only be 10,000 and change. Now, I don't own the transformer. If, if your transformer that runs your house blows up, the power company comes out and replaces it at no cost to you. It's their equipment. So I shouldn't have any cost involved in that. The only other thing there is to pay for is labor. How much are they paying their guys? More than I make, obviously, if $52,000 is the bill. So I'm fighting that currently. I don't think that that's right. I'm 90% sure that's highway robbery and they are just relying on the fact that a lot of people that they do work for are stupid and they don't have a clue what something like this should cost. So I'm contesting that right now. I'm trying to get something worked out with them where we can get a little more feasible. I'm trying to get something worked out with them where we can have a little bit so I'm currently contesting that number with them. I think it's completely out of the ballpark. I don't think that that's reasonable at all. Tell me you guys' experience, if you think that that's a, a sound number, or if you think it's completely outlandish as I do. I'm trying to work out something with them and get a more reasonable price worked out, um, but so far, no dice. What sucks is I'm kind of under a time crunch because I need to have this power in as soon as possible. I can run lights and everything during the summertime here off the generator. It's not really that expensive to run that little diesel generator. It does pretty good on fuel. What I need power for is to keep my wood boiler going all winter long and keep the building heated. Um, I built this building. I don't want to have to work in the cold anymore. But all the groundwork is done for now, as I said. I got my driveway back to passable. Uh, we got that smoothed up. I borrowed my buddy Sam from Scrappy Industries. I borrowed his roller to come over here and do the fine rolling as all five or six of my rollers are dead. Um, so he was nice enough to let me borrow that. I wouldn't mind buying that little unit. That'd be a pretty darn handy unit to have. So what do we have left? On my end, 90% of the work is done. All I have to do is set the pull boxes at the places where the conduit stubs up out of the ground. We're going to have to put in some pull boxes like I discussed. And we're going to have to set my transformer pad over here. we got to put down a 6 inch base of crushed stone. Uh, so like some 2A modified. We'll put that down, set the transformer pad, and get it all prepped and ready for the power company to come in and set the transformer and connect the wires. Other than that, we have to pull the mule tape through this entire length of conduit. So we're going to be using a shop vac, pulling string line through the entire conduit. So what do we have left to do on this project? Aside from wait on the power company to come to their senses and not charge me $52,000, I've got to pull string line and then eventually mule tape through the entire length of this conduit. Um, so that they have something in the conduit to pull the wire through with. After that's done, we have to set our pull boxes and the transformer pad, and then we're gonna wait on the power company to show up. So at the moment of this recording, I have not gone back to watch any of the footage from the video that you guys just saw. So I hope that what I captured illustrates how much 
actual physical work went into what happened here. It probably doesn't seem like a whole lot on camera, but as I said, there was a lot involved here, and unfortunately most of the interesting stuff was across the road where I couldn't film. But if you guys like the video anyways, do me a big favor, hit that thumbs up button down below. It really helps out the channel, doesn't cost you guys a thing. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the second part of this video where we magically unveil what costs $52,000 about pulling a wire through a tube. And lastly, if you'd like to help support the channel in a little more direct fashion, head on over to dieselcreek.com. The link is down in the description. We've got hats, t-shirts, koozies, sticker packs all over on the website. That's dieselcreek.com. So when you make a purchase from the store, not only will you be helping support the channel, you'll probably also be paying into some power company executive's pocketbook. That's dieselcreek.com. Link is down in the description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Couldn't do any of this without you guys. Catch you on the next one.